Herman, you mentioned the Mardi Gras Indians. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me just who these people were and still are and what effect they've had on the music here in New Orleans? Mm -hmm. In any section of New Orleans, you had the Magnolia tribe, which was mm -hmm. off of Magnolia Street, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the Wild Chapatulas Indians, which everybody pretty much familiar with from the Neville Brothers, right. which was on Chapatula Street, uptown. Mm -hmm. Downtown, you had a, you know, Drillery Street, Drillery Street Tribe. Mm -hmm. There was just a bunch of neighborhood guys right. that kept the costume tradition of wearing Indians' outfits and masking for Mardi Gras mm -hmm. happening every year. Just regular, everyday people, you know. Right. And uh, they all knew rhythm, too, you know, natural street rhythm, you know. Right. So you have to know some, some of that. Or they had certain, certain cats in, in, in the tribe to play rhythm to keep the cowbells, mm -hmm. or they would hire a band. Now, that happened within the last 10 years or so, you know, they start hiring like a band, uh -huh. marching band, Dixieland band, to hang out with them, to, to give them the groove, you know. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, they would go through a whole year of, of uh, preparation to make an Indian suit, you know, a certain style, or you, mm -hmm. would, you, you would have like a spy boy, You'd have the big chief, you'd have the, the queen, and you'd have, uh, you know, the other guys, you know, mm -hmm. the Indians, and, you know, and ev everything was there. They really believed they were real Indians. You know, that was, I mean, that, back then it was a real rough thing to, to, to be in an Indian tribe during Mardi Gras time because, you know, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of fights broke out because of my suit looked better than your suit. Uh -huh. You know, that type of thing, you know. So... They would have these meetings on the streets. They would have a spy boy, which was the guy that leads the, go up and spy the streets and walk in. See you know. who's up there. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and by then, everybody had been up all night now, the day before, you know, so they all, everybody just kind of just fired up. And uh, the tribes would meet. You would get certain tribes that would meet, and there was some tribes didn't get along. They really took it to the extreme. I mean, it used to be some serious stuff. And it cooled out, though. It cooled out real fast. Right. Like, you know, this, we're talking about, what I'm talking about is 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. So it, it was all fun, you know. So, uh -huh. And it had these rhythms, man. The rhythms that was going on was more or less uh, one tom-tom you would hear sometimes, way in the background, you know. I'm going to use this floor light. bass drum player or something like that, you know, would, would fill in. Not much snare. You know, you, it's really, hmm. today mm -hmm. you would see a, a, a complete band, you know, but back then I, I, don't, I can't remember seeing snare drums at all. It was mostly a, a one tom-tom from some, some kid's set, you know, one uh -huh. rack mile, you hear it, but the rest was cowbells, tamarines, mm -hmm. shakers. Mm -hmm. That's all you heard, you know. And you may hear that one tom-tom. background, man, you'd know they're coming. You can hear it say, all right. You can feel the excitement in the mm -hmm. air, man. The people in the neighborhood start rousing. Here comes so-and-so tribe. Here they mm -hmm. come. They're getting ready. You know, they may be two blocks down. You can still hear that. With the tamarines and stuff on top of it, you can hear it in the neighborhood. You, know, you just feel the excitement. So those rhythms that was, was, was happening back then was I get mostly my rhythms is from the street rhythms mm -hmm. of the Mardi Gras tribes, you know, and the, the street grooves, and I, and I just polish it up and added some little little slick bass drum part to it because you didn't have bass drums much playing except for a Dixieland band yeah. back then. You know? How much would be worked out and how much would be improvised? All of it would be in improvised. One guy would be the guy that counted off. You would hear him shake a tambourine. He hit. He would hit a tambourine real hard with a drum head on it, right? Mm. <laughs> Shake it like a witch doctor. And that's the cue to get ready. Pop! You would hit it one time and stop. And then you would, some chants, they all had different chants. I can't remember the chants. Right. Everybody shake. You know, sustained shakes, you know, and everything. You know, cowbell. You know. Whatever they're saying, you know. Then he would start that tambourine on. 
Everybody else just played. Just broken. Uh -huh. Just play. Everything fell. I mean, everybody was playing something. There's a natural rhythm here for everybody. You know, you just have to just figure it out. 